How many, uh, the, so, so I preached last Sunday morning, I got a little excited, and I preached about being the church, and um, the, the motive behind that is, is the fact that when we're the church, a healthy church wins souls. Souls are added daily because a healthy church is intrinsically motivated, not just having services, having a song and a sermon, but they are the church where the Holy Spirit uses them as the Holy Spirit guides them in multiple different ways. First Corinthians, thir- First Corinthians talks about uh, giftings, uh, Holy Spirit giftings. Romans talks about spiritual giftings of uh, like being administrating or whether it's mercy. There's many different things that people are different and varying in giftings. And, and uh, so tonight, knowing that, uh, you know, we have church tonight. I know a lot of you that come and I know that you know, this, <laughs> this particular time of the year is, is really, really tough. And, and uh, I know a lot of people came to church this morning and then went out to the fair. And, and I wanted to break this down a little bit because it's, it's just been really pounding in my heart about, um, about people being witnesses and people that are blind seeing, people that are in darkness coming to light, people that are lost being saved by Jesus Christ and by his grace. I mean, truly truly lost. Uh, I looked around in the service this morning. I saw a lot of people. I, I looked and I saw so many people that don't understand true spiritual things in Christ. They, they don't understand. Uh, it's, it's all religion. It's all a, a mental belief system. And mental belief systems become very judgmental. They become very harsh. Uh, they, um, it's, it's not full of love because Christ in us is, is full of love and his Holy Spirit is full of love. And like Pastor Hawkins, which I, I just don't think I could ever preach sermon like that. I, 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 it was phenomenal uh, about being be salt. Salt causes thirst. Uh, salt is a preservative. It penetrates uh, everything. Uh, the meat, you know, it preserves meat when they didn't have, like he said, refrigerated refrigeration. And it's, it's not what you decide to do. It's who you are. It's who you become. And he pointed out from my text tonight, ye shall be witnesses when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. This is a Holy Spirit insight intrinsic thing. This is not a, I can guilt you into doing something to get someone to get a hold of Jesus to see that we all need Jesus. Uh, we have this couple. I tease him. He's they're wonderful. I'm not. I don't remember which African nation and dialect they're from, but they're beautiful people. Chantel is his wife, and Innocent is his name. I mean, met Innocent. I always say to Innocent, Innocent, you're not innocent. You need Jesus too. <laughs> you, none of you are innocent. Um, they have a little girl about this tall. Her name is. This is her real name. The full name. Glory. Glory to God. That's her name. And isn't that great? I, but we all need Jesus. And the thing of it is, is no one can save themselves. No one can change their heart. No one can see through the heart of God people and circumstances and react to it. And so many times religious people are very contentious. They're very opinionated. They're very harsh. And it pushes people away from the love of Christ and the kindness of Christ and the forgiveness of Christ because we have truth without spirit. Worshiping God in spirit and truth, the fruit of the spirit is love and all of the sub-fruits of love, kindness and gentleness and, and self-control, etc. cetera. And, and so truth will only penetrate when it's presented with a true heart of love, but you, but you can, it really can get in the way. I, I'll, I'll have uh, people, you know, talk to me about issues that are current issues. And uh, so you have this, uh, you have this, what I would categorize, and these are my own words, but this is a, you know, traditional faith, Christian base view that in some way has some conservative elements, in some way a little bit of liberal, in some way moderate and in the expression of what they believe and how they express things. And then you have people that are uh, extreme evangelistic. And honestly, the way we say things and the way we express things and the way we look at things, we come across uh, truly with a hammer. And, um, and, 
And I will tell you that no one is one to Christ by arguing over certain things or pounding at people certain things or going off on your um, high horse about certain things. The, the way people come to the tr- reality, the true reality of Christ is when you are witness of what Christ has done in you. When he says you shall be witnesses when the Holy Spirit comes, he's talking about when the Holy Spirit is full in you. The Spirit is the difference of flesh. Spirit, not flesh. Flesh is my will, my selfishness. We had the baptism. I shared with those young people tonight before that the Bible says in Romans 6 that we identify with Christ. With, we are buried with him in baptism. He, Jesus died on the cross and was buried. It's self-denial. It's like the Lord's Prayer, not my will, although it doesn't say that, but it indicates that. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Jesus said it this way, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. And they're buried with Christ in baptism and risen to new life. Behold, all things have passed away, the old things, and everything becomes new. We are in Christ, raised up to new life, to a different life. And when the Holy Spirit comes in, us and flows through us and we live full of the spirit there's a witness to the world that people see something different and it's those it's the fruit of God's spirit it's the love definition in first Corinthians 13 that we read at all of the weddings the patience and the kindness the goodness the self-control um, the gentleness the joy the peace it's that love, that agape, agape God love, the unconditional love. And um, being right about the Bible does not change your heart or save you or get Christ in. Being theologically correct on every point while we try our best is never going to get you to heaven. It's not. You may be theologically correct. It's Christ inside you. In, Rome, in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, but we, you shall receive power. He says that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, the ends of the world, meaning right here at home, out statewide, countrywide, and internationally, everywhere you go. And you will have a heart to see everyone come to Jesus Christ. Being the witness is who you are. It's who you are. You are my witnesses. You are the salt. It's not what you do. However, in who you are will flow opportunity and a heart for God, just like Jesus did when he would confront people and he would say things to people to prick their heart and let them see themselves. It's almost like, here's a mirror. Take a look at your heart. Take a look at your faith. Take a look at your behavior and see, is that okay? Does it measure up? And then the answer is always Jesus. So here's what I want to ask you. Raise your hand if you know what I mean by presenting the gospel with the Roman road. The Roman road. Raise your hand and hold it high. You know what I mean. Okay? Put it down. How many of you can quote every verse in the Roman road? Okay, you want me to do it for you? Let me do it for you. Here it is. But don't don't check out on me because I'm about to tell you something that's going to shock you in just a moment. Romans three twenty three. The first thing a person must know is that they are not innocent. It says, "All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God." All have sinned. In other words, we're all guilty. In other words, we all need a savior. In other words, we all need Jesus to forgive our sins and come into our heart, to change our heart from being selfish to a heart of love and of spirit and of not of just a hard, hard-hearted, but a heart that's tender, a heart of flesh, where God writes his word on our hearts like the Old Testament prophesies that come true. We need to see that we've sinned. That's Romans 3.23. When a person sees that, then they have to think, what, what did God do before our sin? Romans 5.8. God commended his love toward us, or showed, commended his love toward us that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. 
He died for us while we were sinners, all right? When they see that, that God did something by, by giving his son and Christ dying for us while we were sinners, he loved us while we were sinners. And then you have to go from Romans 5, 8 to Romans 6, 23. 6, 23, we've all sinned, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The gift of God, no, sin, uh, let's see, Romans 6, 23, just a minute. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Death is not talking about physical dying. How many of people that you know have died, but they've gone to heaven? What this is talking about is spiritual death. Spiritual death is eternal separation from God. Spiritually being dead. <laughs> We're born spiritually dead. We're born needing to be born again, to be spiritually alive, to be made alive to Christ. And it says the wages of sin, what you earn from living as sin, is separation from God. We are separated from God by sin. There's this sin that's a barrier that we cannot get to God, communicate with God, be right with God because it's right here, and we are spiritually dead. Remember I talked about the baptism? We're buried with him in baptism. We have died to ourself. You become, and then when you come up, we identify with the resurrection. It's called the doctrine of identification. We identify as we come up out of the water with the, the doctrine of resurrection of Jesus Christ that we are now, old things are passed away, all things become new, as I said, and we are now alive in Christ. You know, we, we are raised with him as he was raised to new life. And so uh, the wages of sin is death, but... Here's, here's that spiritual happening. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. The gift of God is through Jesus Christ. It's eternal life. And it's not something you earn or deserve. You notice the word gift. The gift is not something you work for or you've done something special to get. It's just given to you. God gave his only son, John three sixteen. right? That whoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. God gave his only son. So, and then the final one is this. Well, how do, I, how do I get this? What do I do? Romans 10, 9, and 10. 10, 9, and 10. How many remember that one? Let's see if I can remember. It's been a while since I quoted this one. Help me, how does it start? If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with confession of the mouth... Okay, I got to read it. I'm going to look it up right quick. That's the one verse that I always would trip up on. You know, I, I got trained by uh, uh, someone in our church years ago when I had hair, uh, how, to share, how to share faith from the scriptures. And that was uh, Beth Blixt. I don't know if y'all know that or not. And I didn't even know her and I didn't remember it until later I started this church and she started coming and then I remembered it. So, yeah, it says uh, 10, 9, and 10. Here we go. That if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, meaning Jesus is Lord, and shalt believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the heart you believe. Heart, the word heart, is mind. Do you know that? And mind is heart. As a man believeth, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. How do you think with your heart if your heart is just some sort of inside emotion thing? A man believeth with his heart. There's something deep within in the spirit of man and in the mind of man and the heart of man that you believe that this Jesus Christ is alive and he has the power to save us. And so there's the Roman road. Now then, now that you know the Roman road, you can all go out and share that with people and get a lot of people to come to Christ and call on Christ as their Savior and begin a journey of following Jesus, making him Lord. Because you believe, confess with the mouth Jesus is Lord, meaning you make Jesus your own personal Lord. Lord meaning ruler, meaning he's in charge of your life and no longer you. Not my will, thy, thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's it. You can go do it. No, you can't. Here, that, that's the danger. 
It's the danger when I have a heart to see that people that don't understand the true gospel of Jesus Christ, and as a church, we want to see people know that and come to a real relationship with Jesus and not just a religious, a religious uh, activity or, or a belonging to a, a, a church or to adherence to something. The true gospel, the good news of Jesus that really comes inside and changes a person. Because here, here's the truth. Every person is different and at a different moment. And you can't just do this by being trained in a rote manner that's just like, well, I say this first, then I say this, then I say that, I say then. Now, are you ready to go? Okay, and you, 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 you pressure them into saying a prayer and you go, Shh, spiritual little bullet there for me. I, one more said the prayer. First off, them saying the prayer didn't do anything. The words out loud wasn't what you're after. You're after them really wanting and understanding and their heart being turned. So, so what is it when you shall receive the Holy Spirit that you'll be witnesses, not only how you live, but what you say, is that you have to be led by the Spirit. You have to have the Spirit for every person uniquely. No one can teach you how to be how to present the gospel. And when Jesus says at the end of Matthew, go into all the world and preach the gospel and, and teaching them, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. When he says that, there's not, he didn't give them. Now, the first thing you say is this, then you read this verse and then you do that. That's man, that's religion. That's, you know, I love Billy Graham, but he did some disservice. There's some good teaching in what he has, but you don't just go down the, uh, the gospel road or down the, the steps to salvation. That's not enough. It, it, you have to, when you're talking to someone, you have to connect in a relationship and listen to them and how the Holy Spirit help you be able to communicate. So how do you do that? In everyday life, in every conversation, Everything anyone says to you, you can turn it back about Jesus and just try me right now. Uh, someone, someone just say anything you want to say to me right now. What? Corn dog? Corn dogs are great at the state fair. You know, I love those corn dogs. And what I like best about it is the mustard. You know, and Jesus is kind of like the mustard on a corn dog. I mean, you can just get religion. It's like the corn dog without the topping. Now, your type of topping might be ketchup. And, it, and, you know, if it's ketchup, then Jesus is like the ketchup. Because life is really has no spice and no flavor without Jesus. So, yeah, I can turn it. You can say anything you want to say. Now, by the Spirit, I might not go there that quick. I might go, oh, I like corn dogs. I say, we should go get one right now. Let's dismiss this place and I'll go out there. <laughs> I don't know who's paying our way in. And I might just talk to you a little bit about corn dog, and then I just bring up something else. And like, you know, like where do you live? Detroit. Detroit. Oh my goodness! Now, is this your parents right here? Your in-laws. Are they nice to you? Larry. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. Well, they're nice people. You know, people aren't perfect, though, are they? Yeah, I know. Boy, I tell you what, I'm not either. You know, I try, to, I try to live my life right, and I try to do the things that I believe are, is, is, uh, is pleasing to God, but I, I just feel like I, I, I always I fail from time to time, and, and I struggle. And, and, but but I always pray, and God help me. And, uh, and I realize that the only real help to help a person live in the love that God wants is Jesus. See how I turn that conversation? I'm telling you, if you care and you listen to God, and you, I can just give you these examples because this isn't Holy Spirit led, right? This isn't Holy Spirit led right now, not really. I don't, well, I don't know. Maybe it is. I don't know. But what I'm saying is, I'm just telling you that if you have a heart to talk to someone about Jesus, Jesus is everywhere and in anything and everything you say. Okay, so someone says to me, yeah, I, I, my, my, I, I, I uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm like, I really like my girlfriend. We, we really enjoy sleeping together. Now, what are you going to say to that? Shame on you. You know what the Bible says about that. 
That is not what you say. Is that what you say? If you're wanting to point them to Jesus, are you that what you say? I don't think, I don't think, I mean, say, well, you should get married. What's wrong with you? Don't you know anything? So what's wrong with our country? People just living together out there, not even married. Is that good? I don't think it is. What do you say to that? What's her name? Oh, yeah, well, y'all, y'all, how long y'all been hanging out together? You, th- you think you truly love each other? You care about each other? That's really cool. So that's great. You plan on staying together a long time? Yeah? Well, um, hey, listen. My pastor, he's a, he's a kind of a weird guy. And if you ever decide you wanted to get married, he could probably do that. In fact, he told me in a Sunday night that he'd do it free for anybody that doesn't come to church here. They just do it for you just to be real nice and help you out. Say, you know, something we just offer, you know, talk a little bit more and get the opportunity to turn and say, you know, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. Because if they know you're a Christian, some people say things just to get a reaction out of you. Does Jesus love the woman at the well, John chapter 4? And what did he tell her? You have to worship God in spirit and truth. How many husbands has she had and the man she was living with was not her husband? Did Jesus love her? Did he talk to her? Did he put her down? What did he do? He says, here's water, a cup of water. Here, you take this water, but I, guess what? I got living water that you'll never thirst again. What is that water? It's the water of Jesus by his spirit inside. And I'm telling you that if you wake in the morning, that the number one thing Jesus wants more than anything is to love every person that you see that day and help them feel that and hear because we are his voice. Here, God loves you. And if you want to make the opportunity to speak to someone, you can do it. Remember, I've been telling you that every day I talk to someone about how much God loves them, about Jesus caring about them, and I try to share faith and encourage people to put their hope and their trust in Jesus. Now, I'm, I'm one that goes out to eat a lot, and some of you have noticed that I've been doing more of that lately. And, and um, I used to wear a size 34, 36, 34. Mm-hmm. It's a little bigger than that now, Rod. <laughs> so somebody else throw out a word. I'm, I'm not going to go too much longer here, but throw out, uh, just say something to me, anything. Tell me, what? You're cold. You know what? <laughs> I know a hot place. <laughs> I know a hot place. <laughs> See how... I mean, I, you did that, and if I'm laughing, it's humorous, but then I can go, I can, no, I'm just kidding with you. I'd say, but, 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 but I'm just kidding with you, but are you a person of faith? See, never ask a person if they're a Christian, because everybody in America is a Christian just about. Say, are you a person of faith? Have you come to the place in your life where you have a peace that you're going to go to heaven when you die? Because if you haven't, Jesus wants to give you that peace if you'll just call on him. It's not something I can do for you but I can help you with that. It's easy, guys. If you're not afraid to talk to someone about Jesus, it's really easy. It really is. It's not hard. It's just like loving that person and talking to that person about real, everyday things in life. Katie, were you, going, you had your finger up. You, what is it? Don't be afraid. I'm sure I was meant to be a boy. You know what? I don't understand that. I understand your feelings, but I do know that, that there's uh, people that feel that way. And I want you to know that God understands how you're feeling right now. And uh, I, I'm not sure, you know, I would go into a conversation and let them talk about their feelings. And then I would say, can I pray for you? And I would ask God to reveal himself in a real way. You know, uh, it's very easy to be black and white on this issue, for instance. And I hear people that are evangelical like just go crazy. But, you know, there are people that are born with, with both parts. They're born and they're both male and they're both they're female. They're male and they're female. There's a word for it. I can't remember it right now. Yes. 
And it, you got to be careful when you go running your mouth about that. And, uh, and, and you got to be compassionate. And you got to, because the answer isn't to fix, if, say there is confusion with someone for whatever reason, I don't know, that I can't judge that. And trying to like go, ah, you know, Adam is not going to change anything. You got to love them, share with them, get them to Jesus, and then let Jesus show them what God wants to show them. And I'm not going to say any more than that, and don't judge me for not saying any more than that, and here's why. Because I don't have a specific person that I'm talking to. I'm only talking about a hypothetical situation. Does everybody understand that? So I can't say any more than that, other than the fact, be careful that you don't just come unglued on somebody. Okay, Marsha? I'm a Mormon. I believe in Jesus. He's my brother. I'm glad that you're a Mormon, and I'm glad that you believe in Jesus and that you believe he's your brother. Let me ask you a question. What does the Bible say Jesus is? Who Jesus is? The Savior of the world. Okay. The Son of God. Did, did he, Jesus is your brother? Yeah. Well, he, he's, he, he calls us brothers. Yeah, exactly right. I'm okay with that. You know what, I don't know your heart and you don't know mine. And I'm not going to judge you whether you have Christ in your heart or not based on some theology of a group. I don't per personally happen to believe in all of your theology. But if you tell me what's important to me is that Jesus Christ, God the Son, like John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word dwelt among us. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory, even as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And if you believe that that Jesus, that is fully God, that was the word that became flesh to us, is the one who came and he died on that cross for our sins, and Jesus Christ and Jesus alone for forgiving us my sin, I'm good with that. But you know what? There are a lot of people in our church, their theology about salvation is perfect, but they're not saved that burdens my heart beyond measure. They're, they no longer, it's like the prophecy that came this morning by way of text. You remember it? Let me read it. Let me read it again. It's on my, my text. I'm not going to tell you who gave it because I don't think they wanted me to tell that. But this person was the most unlikely person to send this. And in the middle of the service, the Holy Spirit gave him this word. And this is like in Corinthians where it talks about the gifts of the Spirit, one of them being... Uh, prophecy. Uh, 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 it's a word from God for the moment. It's, it's, a, it's a spiritual truth that is spoken in a way that's just, just right for the moment. And if you heard Pastor Hawkins' message on being the assault of the earth, listen to this word. The Lord would say this morning, that's to us that are here, we're here this morning, you label yourselves Christians, but how are you different from the rest of the world? If the answer does not come quickly, then lose the ways of the world and follow after my ways and gain everything. That being from what Jesus is saying, follow my ways, follow the ways of Jesus. You see how true that is and how that is exactly being the salt of the earth. Because if we are no different, and Christ hasn't done anything to make our lives different, then is Christ there? And I'm just telling you, I see a lot of people, their life is no different than anyone else that just doesn't believe anything about God. In fact, I got friends that are way better behavior in their life and the way they live that not even sure they believe about Jesus or what they believe about God, and they're fantastic people, right? Because they were raised a certain way and they were disciplined and they were taught certain things. And you see that even in groups of people that may be off theologically. They're devout people who are wrong about who Jesus were, was. People that live outwardly, holy living, right living. They don't do things wrong. They are kind. Lots of Jews are that way. They do not accept Jesus as Messiah. There are many Messianic Jews that have Jesus as their Messiah. But they're good people. 
And I'm telling you that the only thing that will change your heart is Jesus by his spirit. It's an invisible Holy Spirit thing. And the only way to get people to see Jesus is to be led by the spirit. You know, I was, I was really frightened to do this sermon this way tonight. It, it's scary for me. It's scary, but my heart is to say this, is that if you will help ask God's spirit to lead you, because when the Holy Spirit comes up on you, you will not only be a witness because people will see that you're different, but you'll witness, you'll go into all the world, you'll preach, you will share. And let me tell you, God's spirit, there's no, no one person. So like when I would react to some of these things, there might be another time when there's a story that the right thing to do is to say exactly what God's spirit would do. And someone watching that heard that go, oh, you can't say that to them. That was horrible. What did you do? Well, that was the Holy Spirit that had me say that. And that ended up being the very thing that changed them. How many of you know what I'm talking about? So I can't, I can't just give you example after example and tell you the Roman road or give you the evangelism explosion outline and teach that, which I know all of those verses too, and I went door to door and used. But, you know, what, what I learned in that is that's a framework of knowledge that you study. It's good to know the verses in the Roman road. It's good to know the steps of evangelism explosion. But when it comes down to it, you have to have God's Spirit lead you. How does he do that? It's an it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a inner voice that guides you, not audible, but through your thoughts. He puts thoughts. He puts thoughts of love for the person. He, put thoughts, he puts thoughts of the right response to what they just said to you. He puts thoughts like, don't say anything about that. Because, what does it say about Pearls. Don't cast pearls. It's kind of a crude thing in the Bible before swine. In other words, he's just saying there's certain riches and truth that people that aren't were a place where they can really understand it and grasp it. It's not being crude. And there's times when the, you, it's not the time to tell them. Do you understand that? In every relationship, there comes a time that it's the moment of God that you share what needs to be shared. And with that, I leave this challenge to you. Let's be witnesses and let's go into the world and bring the gospel, the good news of Jesus, and let's teach them everything God has commanded and help them really come to real, real life-changing experience with Jesus Christ. The word there, when my power, when the Holy Spirit comes with you, he says uh, in Acts 1.8, you know, how many y'all know I have this memorized, but you know, when you get my age, sometimes these things just go away. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit's coming. That word is divine ability, dunamis. It's a it's a Holy Spirit ability and power. It's a cousin to the word grace, which is how many remember what Dr. Nunley taught us? Anybody remember it? Would you put in the word grace? No. Charis. And what does it mean? What does it mean? Divine enablement. God's enablement. In other words, you can't change your heart. You can't save yourself. His grace comes in and changes you. It does something. It opens your eyes. It's not a definition word of salvation. It's a power word of conversion and transformation. That's what it is. God's grace enters into your life and makes you different. Power is a word like that where the Holy Spirit gives you divine God ability to go and be able to speak to people led by the Spirit, quickened by the Spirit, empowered by the Spirit to be able to penetrate through the natural intellectual thinking to the spirit man and to the heart to touch deep within a person. Does everybody understand that? So I can't do this for you. I can't teach this to you. Only God can teach it to you. Do you understand that? I can't teach you how to be a witness. Oh, there's people that'll do it. I mean, you can learn scriptures, but I can't teach you how to go at, with each person and know how to give them Jesus. You just have a heart for it, and you listen, and you go, and you depend upon God to help you. Here's the question, though. Do you ever think in the day, who could I talk to about Jesus today to show him the way? 
Do you wake up and pray, God, let me have an opportunity to share my faith and to share, God, your love and this great gift of Jesus? Because he wants the church to be healthy. It only happens by the Spirit in, right? But, you know, he has a heart. Why did God give his son that no one would perish but everyone have life? God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world. We were condemned already in that we were sinners and we were in darkness and we couldn't see the light. We couldn't comprehend this love. So please listen to me. Let Jesus Christ flow through you by his spirit and let's be the church. Let's be the church. The only way to be the church is to be spirit, Holy Spirit people. Let me say it's not weird to be Holy Spirit people. Why? Jesus ascended, Acts 1, right after that one verse. He, they watched him go up into the clouds. And an angel appeared and said, this same Jesus you see ascending will come again in like manner someday. He said, wait here 10 days and pray till the Holy Spirit comes so you're endued with power, supernatural ability to be witnesses. And it's that same power that, of God that's here to help us. And only God can do it. I can't. But please, please, please be servants yielded to say, God, use me. So I'll ask the question, don't raise your hand. How long has it been since God has used you to speak to someone, even speak to someone, not whether they responded, about salvation and about Jesus and about his grace, about his love, their need for God? You got the opportunity. How long has that been? Secondly, how long has it been since you had the opportunity then in building a relationship and sharing with someone for them to pray with you and say, Jesus, come into my heart and forgive my sins? Now, I know I'm a full-time pastor. I get that, and it's, I have a little advantage over you because I got time when you're teaching, Erica, when you're teaching kindergarten out in Adele, I have, I'm maybe meeting with someone, right? By the way, teachers, you're the best people in the whole world. Take the teachers and the nurses out of the world, it falls apart. I'm telling you right now. Take the pastors out of the world, probably nothing would happen. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. In fact, it probably make us make the world better for a lot of cases. A lot of cases. I'm telling you, they they mess up true Christianity more than anybody else. So, let me pray for you. Thank you, Jesus, for your love and grace. Uh, uh, I, I really do want to be sincere and genuine and. And I, I want to show people the way. You said, Jesus, you said, I am the way, the truth, the life, and no man goes to the Father in heaven but by me. Jesus, if, if you're that way, I want to show them to you. Jesus, the word says that there's no other name in, given in heaven or earth that a man can be saved from their sin but the name of Jesus, that Jesus is the way. Jesus is the name by which we're saved. And that because you went on the cross, that's the only thing that we can trust in is that you died there in my place for my sin. You took my place. So, Jesus, I accept that, and I thank you for it. There's guilt and shame of the past of sins. But, Jesus, you come to take that away and forgive me. And you don't want us to live in guilt or the stain of sin or the shame of sin. You don't want us to live stained or shamed or guilty you want to set us free, and you want to forgive our sins. And we must believe it and receive it and offer it to every person, no matter what their sins may be, no matter how much we disagree with their lifestyle. We must offer them Jesus because you're the only one that can change a life. And our denomination, our religion, my sermons, the, the theology, it's not going to change anybody. Jesus, only you can change them. So help us give the world Jesus. Help us, God that they would know you, may we encounter you so we can go and be powered, not only enabled, divinely enabled by your grace, but powered, powered by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.